A nuclear stress test is a non-invasive imaging test that evaluates the blood flow to the heart at rest and under stress. More specifically, it is used to evaluate if coronary arteries are blocked. It can also indicate whether you've previously had a heart attack and how much heart muscle has been damaged from that attack. Similar to other nuclear medicine imaging techniques, a radiopharmaceutical is injected and taken up by the heart as it flows through the coronary arteries. Areas of the heart with good blood flow take up more radiopharmaceutical than areas with poor blood flow or damage in your heart. With the current technology, nuclear stress testing can detect perfusion abnormalities before metabolic, electrical or anatomic disturbances occur. Nuclear stress testing is typically divided into two parts. One where the patient is at rest and one during exercise. The principle behind this approach is that a partial obstruction may not impair oxygen delivery during rest when the oxygen demand is quite low. On the other hand, when oxygen demand is high, as during exercise, it is possible that the obstruction now limits the blood flow to the heart and that decreased amounts of radiopharmaceutical reach that area of the heart. Also, the blood vessels distal to a significant stenosis are dilated by autoregulation to maintain blood flow at rest. Stress conditions cause normal vessels to dilate and increase blood flow up to four times the basal blood flow. But little additional dilation is seen in a stenotic vessel. An obstruction is detected by comparing the rest view with the stress view and you will notice a region that has normal uptake during rest but decreased uptake during exercise. Stress can be produced in two different ways, either by exercise or by pharmacologic vasodilation. Exercise stress testing is typically done on a treadmill, but can also be done with a bicycle. Treadmill testing uses a protocol in which the rate and slope of the device are periodically increased to place increasing demands on the heart. The end point of the exercise is when the heart rate reaches a predefined level, typically 85% of the maximum heart rate. The tracer is then injected and exercise is continued for an additional one minute. An alternative method, pharmacologic vasodilation, is indicated for patients who are unable to exercise. But exercise stress testing is the preferred choice because it also gives you an indication of the patient's exercise tolerance and can identify symptoms that are provoked by exertion, such as chest pain, dyspnea and lightheadedness. A variety of protocols exist. You can either do the test in one or two days and you can do the stress test first, followed by the rest test or the other way around. A typical one-day protocol is to inject a low dose of the radiopharmaceutical with the patient at rest and to obtain the spectra images 30 minutes later. The reason we wait 30 minutes is because then the background activity will have cleared from the blood. After the rest scan, the patient exercises and an injection of a larger dose of the tracer is given when the target heart rate is achieved. The spectra images are obtained 50 to 30 minutes later. The larger dose for the stress portion is given so that the myocardial perfusion with exercise can be distinguished from the residual radioactivity left over from the rest study. This is usually successful, but for clearer distinction, the rest and stress studies can be separated by 24 hours. A simplified protocol is to perform only the exercise stress study and if normal, a rest study is not performed. The principle is that if an adequate stress is achieved and no myocardial perfusion deficits are seen, the patient is very unlikely to have significant coronary artery disease and comparison with a rest study does not add additional information. Patient preparation is important to maximize the results. First of all, the patient should be fasting to limit gut activity that may interfere with the evaluation of the left ventricle. Second, caffeine must be avoided if a vasodilator stress test is expected. And third, the decision to withhold medication is dependent upon a number of patient-specific factors, but in general, 
blood pressure medications with antianginal properties, such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers and nitrates, should be discontinued at least 12 hours before the start of the procedure. This is because these medications may limit the development of ischemia during the stress test. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, I will go over the different radiopharmaceuticals, I will explain how to interpret a nuclear stress test and tell you when to order a stress test.